Now, a very important part, you have to understand what's actually there that can help you. All right, guys, I'm gonna give you five most important points that you have to do on your one-handed backhand in order to get it better. Only five of them, but it works for almost everybody. You know, uh, throughout years, I've been playing tennis for almost 21 years right now, and I found that, you know, you can go from coach to coach, and now with YouTube, you have so many videos and so many explanations that you can get so confusing. So it took me 21 years to get those five points that can help you for sure. You cut down all the unnecessary stuff, and you just do those five, and your back end is going to prove immediately. But before we get into the video, remember, if you, if you wait until until the last second of this video you're gonna find out something very very important something you really really want but you have to watch this video until the end so stay tuned don't you guys think sometimes it's painful you know you're like you're going from one coach to another or you watch one video and then another video and you just get confused and you're trying things and you're changing things and all of a sudden you're not improving or maybe even going backwards, you just got something on your back and then you, you heard something else, you're trying to change it and all of a sudden you're going back in process. Number one, do not, do not, do not. If something starts improving, stop changing it. I have so many people coming in here and they're like, oh, you know, one, one day I'm starting here on my back, another day I'm starting there, and then I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So basically, you're just confusing yourself and you're restarting those habits over and over again. Stop doing it. You got to get something that works, repeat it, and make it better. Okay, so let's start with the first one. I know a lot of one-handers, they're wondering, should I do a style like Roger Federer? What do you talk about the preparation, the racket take back, right? And I find that, Okay, let's look at the best backhands there. We have Roger Federer, we have Gasquet, we have Vavrinka, we have uh, Pete Sampras back in the day whatnot. Do you think they all started exactly the same? And the answer is no, they didn't, right? They all started slightly different. Their take back was slightly different. For example, Vavrinka keeps his racket a little bit away, same as Dominic Thiem. Roger Federer is a little bit closer and so on and so forth. But now, very important part, you have to understand what's actually there that can help you. The key is when you're taking your racket back, the racket stays almost facing the side fence. It's not lifting up with the strings up, it's not looking down. Uh, and the most common mistake that people have is when they take their racket back, their racket is open a little bit. So when they start swinging, it starts very wobbly and you, people make a mistake. So number one, make sure your racket stays sideways in the face of the racket, face net. No matter how you start, you can start like Dominic Thiem and swinging the ball, or you can do it like Roger Federer or any other way, but this part is very important. So, of course, if you started, let's say, two weeks ago and start practicing like Dominic Thiem, uh, with the racket staying away from you, and you start feeling better, and then somebody said, hey, why don't you do it like Roger Federer? You start changing your back end actually is going to get worse for a little bit until you practice this swing and you start getting better. So with that said, just stick to what you did before because it's actually not the most important part of the swing. All right, number two is preparation. That's something that applies almost to everybody and uh, making sure that everybody is staying with the wide stance, uh, slightly wider than the shoulders bend, your back is a little bit straight like this. You know, some people tend to go and bend over like that and there that's something that everybody is supposed to do uh, you're always staying on your toes throughout the point right very important part because you don't want to be flat-footed very important a lot of people hit a good shot uh, just that flat-footed and then somebody strikes the ball to the corner and they're not ready to run for that ball right so the preparation ready position making sure you're not standing like this your left hand is always on the racket they'll help you to change the grip Get ready for the one-handed backhand, especially for the one-handed backhand, because you really have to change your grips in between. You gotta go with Eastern or, uh, you know, I don't see anybody doing Western grip on one-handed backhand, but you know, if somebody does, that's even worse, because you're gonna go from one Western grip to another. So you wanna make sure your left hand is always, always on the racket, no matter what. So it's number two. So we got preparation, making sure your backswing is, uh, you know, pick one of your idols and make sure you follow them, but just stick to it, do not change it. Now we're going number three. That's very important part. So now you got preparation and this is, guys, I know you heard it before, but how many of you actually doing it is a split step. This is something that I find so frustrating sometimes when people just don't do it, especially when the pace of the ball decreases, feels like 
why do I really have to do a split step if I can just run to the ball, hit it, come back and not do it? But you really, really have to do it. So with that said, when you're getting ready, your wide position, you go on split step, prepare and you start moving to the ball. This one, I find a lot of people think they do it, but they don't. Number four is staying with the wide stand as you moving to the ball as well. So a lot of people, yes, they're ready, it looks nice and then they start moving their feet close together and they lose balance when they get to the ball. So you want to make sure as you're moving, your feet are always apart and never put them uh, together. So let's see how it looks like. We do a pre preparation, we do split step, and we're moving balanced to the ball no matter how you're preparing, making sure your racket is facing the side fan. All right, and number five, this is a very important part. When you get to the ball, the point of contact has to be way out in front of you. Actually, five, I would say even five and a half, five, six, is when you're swinging through the ball, the point of contact, full length of your arm in front of you. And when you're swinging through it, you're separating your arms. A lot of players, when they swing, they tend to keep their left hand next to their body. And as they're swinging through the ball, they overturn. All right, let's see how it looks like. So you're gonna do split step, you're turning, moving to the ball and then you're striking the ball into the back fence. How about that? All right, guys, here's an example of how to do it. You're gonna do a split step, get ready, rack it on the side. You could keep it closer or far away from you. Get set, and then striking the ball and separating the hands. And again, split step, staying wide stance, boom, that's it. And again, same thing. There you go. All right, guys, this is the five important points. Of course, I left out a few very, very important points. Now, if you want to learn more about your one-handed backhand, forehands, volleys, serves, just name it. We created the perfect course for you called Player Checklist. When you get the uh, bullet points for every stroke with instructions to it. It's a nice course for every single stroke. You're going to learn how to play tennis like a professional tennis player and you can fire your coach right now. Thank you.